Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna paint a toucan. Let's get started. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yay! So just like Anzi said, we're gonna draw and paint a toucan. toucan. So what are the major colors that you see in a toucan? Black, white, blue, red, mm -hmm. orange, and yellow. Wow, that's a lot of colors. Yeah, the beak is really brightly colored, isn't it? Yeah. So let's talk about our supplies today really quick. We each have a piece of paper. This is important to use watercolor paper when you're working with watercolors. And this is our Fluid 100 cotton watercolor paper. These are four by six inch sheets, which we've taped down to prevent warping when we apply the paint in water. We each have paper towel, a size eight round brush, a Sharpie, a pencil, and water jars. And then the paint set I'm using today is my Winsor Newton Cotman paint set. Now, there isn't an orange in this set, is there? And I know how to make orange. We use red and, and yellow. Yeah. So what we have here is the lizard and crimson, which is going to be our red. And, and it's not going to look exactly like that red, but that's we, okay. And that's orange. And, and we that's have yellow. Yellow. Uh-huh. Um, and we'll probably dip into our, let's see, we have Payne's gray and black. You can use either one of those for the bird himself. And then we're probably going to paint some jungle colors in the background. And like rainforces. All right, so we're looking at our reference photo on the computer, and I'll uh, include a link to this photo in the description below. And our toucan, he's turning his bill off to the left. So what shape do you see the toucan making? Mm, kind of like a seven. Yeah, he and looks. It, and it has a tail. Yeah, he looks like a number seven with a tail. <laughs> that's a great way to describe it. So grab your and pencil. Also, it looks like a question mark. Yeah, that's another way you could describe this shape. So good. So we're going to make sure there's room on either side of his head. His head's going to be a little smaller than what we're seeing in the picture. But we're going to start by doing a curved top of a seven shape. Yes. And then we're going to bring it down and angle it into the middle of the paper. There. That's the middle. So it looks like a candy cane or a curved seven. And then, and now we're going to add the tail. Let's do it. So the tail is shaped kind of like a square, but it's, it's curved it's too. It's kind of triangle-ish square. Mm -hmm. And then back in. Good. That was mine. I think I made mine a bit too skinny. Oh, I don't mind. Looks good. So the next thing we're going to do is draw the bottom part of the beak. We want to make his beak fairly wide. So. It's helpful to just put like a little tick mark underneath to decide how fat you want the beak to be. And it's also important not to bring his beak all the way over to his back. We're gonna need to leave room for his neck and his body. So I'm gonna make a little mark there. That's where we're gonna stop the beak. So let's add a point. It's a sharp beak. So now we're gonna draw a line that's parallel to the top line and connecting it all the way to that neck. The next thing we're going to do is draw the body, and the body is a little fatter than the beak, isn't it? Yes. So we're just going to draw a curved line connecting it to the tail like that. Very good. Okay, now the beak separates from the head with this curved line right about where the neck is. And then we see almost this sideways triangle shape. Let's draw that on before we do the eye. Yes. All right, now really close to the beak, we're gonna draw the eye. And there's a separation between yellow and white right here. So I'm gonna draw a little line marking that separation. And inside of this smaller shape, I'm gonna draw a circle. A circle. Yeah. And a circle. And there's the highlight. So yes, you can draw a smaller circle inside of the larger circle. And then a teeny circle for a highlight. You already did yours. Now, what is bigger, the top part of the beak or the bottom part of the beak? The bottom. Well, the top part is bigger. Oh, the top. So, yeah. So when we add the mouth, try to make the bottom part of the mouth smaller or less wide than the top part of the beak. Okay, next, we're going to draw this white shape for the bottom portion of the wing. We're going to start by drawing a skinny wing right alongside of our body line and stopping kind of halfway up. Then we're gonna draw a curved line just above the tail. Good, and then we're gonna draw a backwards L, connecting that shape. Now when we go back in with paint, this part is gonna be white. So we're gonna be careful to paint around that shape. 
Now let's draw a wing shape. So this is part of the wing. We're gonna make it come up alongside the belly like that. And then you can add some feather shapes inside of that wing, just little straight up and down lines. Make them short. Kinda like that. Yes, and remember when you're sketching not to press too hard with your pencil or you'll leave marks in your watercolor paper. All right, on the tail feather, we're gonna add a curved shape for another feather. And you can draw a line in the middle. It almost looks like a tongue. <laughs> <laughs> like a tongue on a toucan's tail. Inside of the bill, there's this black curved shape. So we're gonna draw almost a sideways comma inside of his bill. That's gonna be black when we paint it. Or you can do it with Sharpie first. And then there's also a black curved shape right here. I kinda make my beak a little short. That's okay, he still looks like a toucan. Okay, now we're gonna draw a little claw at the bottom. And, and that's where he's gonna hang on to the branch. Exactly. And then in front of him, make sure your lines don't come in over the top of your bird, draw a branch. Yes, and that's it for our sketch. Are you ready to outline with Sharpie? Yep. Okay. This is a great opportunity to fix any lines you weren't happy with. Remember, Sharpie is permanent. I'm gonna fill in the little eye part, just not the part that's blue. You can fill in the little foot black if you want to. Let's color this part in black too, because we're gonna be going right next to it with yellow paint. And we wanna make sure the yellow paint doesn't get messed up by the black and the Sharpie will stay put. I like your bird. Thank you. Yeah, he looks really good. It'll be so fun to add that yellow and red. Your bird looks good too. Thanks. Are you ready to paint? Yeah. Okay, grab your brush. We're gonna start with the lightest color, which is yellow. Yellow. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna dip into our bright yellow and, and paint this part around the eye. Careful to avoid that little blue part. And, and avoid that eyeball. So start by wetting your brush first and then removing any excess and then dipping into your damp paint grabbing lots of juicy paint on your brush. Yeah, you might need a little more water. Just make sure it's not soaking wet. Mm -hmm. Mine is kind of big. So, so it's... you're going to paint this area right around the eye. Uh -huh. Good. Nice. Now, do you see in our picture this white highlight on the top of the bill? Uh -huh. If you want, you can paint around a highlight and leave that so it looks shiny. So I just painted the top part of the beak yellow and I left a highlight. You don't have to do that, it's too hard. You can fill the whole thing in if you want to. Yeah, just to make it real, I'll do good. it. Good, that took some control, some good brush control there. I'm rinsing the yellow out. The next color we're gonna take is red. I'm gonna pull this down so everyone can see our red. That's this one. And I'm actually gonna spray the paint to make it wet first. All right, so let's take some red. Do you want to start? Yep. We're going to paint the bottom part of the beak bright red and make sure to hold your brush close to the tip for better control. What are we going to do with the orange part? You'll see. We're not actually going to do any mixing. So once you've got the red painted on, you still have a little red on your brush, right? Remove uh -huh. a little bit on your paper towel so it's not so dark. And then we're going to do these up and down brush strokes over the top of the yellow. And what color do we get? Orange. Yeah, right over the top. You don't need a lot of paint for this, just a little bit. And I'm gonna do a streak right across the top too. With orange? 
with the red that's on my brush. Yep, it turns orange when it covers the yellow, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks orange. Good work. That was the hardest part. <laughs> the next thing we're going to paint is the blue eye. You want to rinse your brush all the way Button. before you get blue and dry it on your paper towel. I'm going to use this blue right here. This one is ultramarine. This one's a little bit too greenish blue, and I think this one is perfect. You just need to dab a little bit onto your brush, and we're going to go so tiny in this little eye and paint I it in I, blue. I think I'll only use the tip. That's it. Only use the tip. Just the tip of your brush, yep. If you need to switch to a smaller brush, you can, but I think you can do it. So next, we're going to paint the black body. We do have black on our palette. We also have Payne's Gray, which can almost go black. And black is kind of a flat color. It's completely opaque. It's not transparent, but we're just going to use it because it's convenient. So grab some black and make sure to avoid that white feather. We're going to paint everything except the white feather. And hold your brush kind of upright so you can be more careful to stay inside your lines. When you're holding your brush kind of sideways, it's easy to mess up a little bit, isn't it? All right, once you're done with the black, rinse your brush all the way. Yes, and Mine then dry it on the paper towel. Now we can either decide to paint the branch next or the background. Mm branch. All right, I'm going to use this burnt sienna brownish color. And I'm only going to paint the bottom part of the branch. I'm going to leave a highlight across the top like that. So the branch looks kind of shiny. I have two sides of my branch. Okay, now rinse that out all the way. Anytime you're switching colors, you need to rinse your brush in between so you don't end up with muddy colors. And then remove any excess water. If you have a lot of extra water, you want to remove it. Otherwise, your paint's just going to be all water, right? Yep. I like this jungle green color for the background, so that's what I'm going to start with for the background. I'm going to add a little more water to it. I'm not going to fill my whole paper up. I'm just going to do right up to the edge of the bird and make it look kind of blotchy, like there's sunlight coming through the trees. And I think I'll add a little bit of yellow too. Sure. Just kind of blending on my paper towel. <laughs> a pine tree. That's interesting. I like that. Very cool. Thanks. It's just a technique. So pretty. I love the beak on your toucan. It looks incredibly shiny, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Thank yeah. you. Are you going to finish the sky up there or you want to call it good? What do you think? I think it's pretty good. It turned out so good. I like your I like your toucan. Thank you. I like yours too. So we're going to let those dry before we remove the tape and then we'll see how they look after we take the tape off. Okay. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.